Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for US Oil for the trading week ending Friday 2nd of July 2021. Last week my analysis for oil expected upward movement and again that's exactly what we're getting. The targets remain the same, a short term target at 76.91 is now quite close by and a longer term target is at 87.9. Elliott Wave analysis first, classic analysis last. This Elliott wave count says from this all-time high for US oil to this major low in January 2020, a corrective structure, a counter trend movement, which means this analysis at the quarterly chart level sees oil as within a huge bull market, and I expect new highs above this prior point, substantially above this point. This is the end of a first wave at super cycle degree for this analysis, a second wave counter trend movement and a third wave begins here which may only subdivide as an impulse the simplest of the motive wave structures and an impulse will subdivide at cycle degree one two three four five here's an example of an impulse in the opposite direction one two three four five i'm expecting the same structure but much bigger in an upward direction Within this impulse, cycle wave 1 may be incomplete and also may be subdividing as an impulse at primary degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3 has moved beyond the end of 1. It's not the shortest of 1, 3 and 5 because so far it's longer than 1. When it arrives, 4 may not move into 1 price territory and then 5 should move beyond the end of 3 to avoid a truncation. So it'll look like this, but in the opposite direction and labelled at primary degree. When it eventually arrives, cycle wave 2 may not move beyond the start of cycle 1 below 10.24. Let's take a look at the weekly chart where this slow down here is this point down here. Now we're looking at the structure, the early part of super cycle wave 3. Cycle wave 1 is an incomplete 5 wave impulse at primary degree, subdividing 1 two, three, four, five. And the target for primary three is for it to reach a common Fibonacci ratio to primary wave one of 1.618. That target is 87.90. Primary three itself may only subdivide as a five wave impulse and labeled at intermediate degree one, two, three, four, five. Within intermediate wave 3, no second wave correction may move beyond its start, below 57.26. Let's zoom in now on the daily chart at intermediate 3, where this low down here is this point down here. This is the end of 2 and the start of 3. Within intermediate wave 3, which may only subdivide as a 5 wave impulse, we may have a leading contracting diagonal for minor wave 1, an expanded flat for minor 2, and minor wave 3 also may only subdivide as an impulse. The target for minor 3 is for it to reach 1.618 the length of minor 1 at 76.91. If, that's if that target is wrong, it may not be high enough. Minor wave 3 may be an even longer extension. And so as we approach this target, which may happen next week, if price just keeps on rising, then I'll calculate a new target for minor 3 to reach 2.618, the length of minor 1, the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence. When minor wave 4 arrives, it may not move into minor wave 1 price territory below 66.75. This data I'm using for US oil is cash market data and so no overlap between 4 and 1 will be tolerated for this data because then the rule would be violated. This trend channel is an acceleration channel. I'm drawing it from the end of minor 1 to the last high and placing a parallel copy on the low of minor 2. When minor 3 is complete then this channel would be drawn using Elliott's first technique and it may show us where minor wave 4 may find support about the lower edge. The target for primary 3 is the same as on the weekly chart for it to reach 1.618 the length of primary 1. 
At the daily chart level, this is an alternate, which is labelled a little bit differently. Let's just quickly go back to my main chart. So they're both the same to this low here. They both see intermediate 3 beginning here with 1 and 2, and now minor 3 unfolding. This first wave count sees minute 1, 2, 3, 4 complete, but the second alternate sees minute 1 over up here. So this is much more bullish. And now I have that higher target that I mentioned to you on the last daily chart. If within intermediate 3 we have minor 1 and 2 and now minute 1 and 2, we have two first and second waves completed. And so this wave count expects the middle of a third wave at minute, minor, intermediate and primary degree. That's the strongest portion of a trend within an impulse, the middle of the third wave or sometimes actually a fifth wave to end a third wave for a commodity. And so this wave count is more bullish, so it needs a higher target. Minor 3 will reach 2.618, the length of minor 1, at 86.40. And to work with that higher target for minor 3, the target here for primary 3 is for it to reach 2.618, the length of primary 1, at 121.43. Classic analysis. Now let's see how much or how little support from classic technical analysis there is for that Elliott Wave analysis. One of the first things I do when I do classic technical analysis is I look left. I zoom out for one, two, three years and I look to draw horizontal trend lines to touch as many clusters of highs and lows as I can and that's my support and resistance. Oil has just passed through quite a dense cluster of support and resistance and so now some energy may be released as it continues on up. Support currently may be expected about 65.65 for any deeper pullbacks. There is a little bit of support from volume overall for price as it rises. We have overall a little bit of an increase. It, it won't necessarily be week on week steady. We're just looking at the general pattern here and there is some support from volume for this upward movement. ADX is indicating an upward trend, but it's above both DX lines, so it says the trend is extreme. However, this market can reach a very extreme trend and retain that for quite a long while. If ADX reaches 45 and is above both DX lines, then the trend would be very extreme. If it remains very extreme for a little while, then it'll be getting into danger territory. We're not there yet for oil. ATR is flat as price moves sideways and now higher. On balance volume, the last signal it gave was a bullish break above this resistance line. It confirms new highs and so it supports a bullish analysis. RSI is overbought. People were asking me why I wasn't considering this bearish divergence that was back here. Back here. And the reason was it wasn't an obvious divergence between swing highs. The highs weren't close enough together. And in my experience over the years, they need to be a little closer together for it to be reasonable in terms of a signal. RSI for this market, when it has a strong trend, can reach quite deeply overbought and remain there for quite a while. And so I'm waiting now to see a situation where we have a pullback and another high and then if that happens, I'll look to see if RSI exhibits short-term swing high divergence. And if it does, then we may, may be looking at a stronger downward movement. But we're not there yet. Stochastics fully overbought. That can remain so for a long period of time. We don't use that in a trending market. That's for use in a consolidating market. At the daily chart level, we've got a strong candlestick for Thursday not shown on this chart because it was prepared just prior to New York close as a small inside day for Friday, a small pause like a little doji, a little bit like this one. And that's okay, that's just a small pause within an upward trend. And so this bearish upper wick suggests maybe have been relieved, the bearishness of the upper wick, I'm sorry, may have been relieved by that small pause or we may get another small little pullback. But a strong push from volume for Thursday suggests more upward movement ahead. ADX at the daily chart level indicates an upward trend which has a long way to go before it becomes extreme. Oil won't be entering into danger territory until ADX on both the daily and weekly chart levels reaches extreme or very extreme. ATR declining as price moves higher seems to be normal for this market. 
On balance volume gives a weak break above weak resistance. This is a weak bullish signal supporting the Elliott wave count. RSI overbought. I'm not going to notice this very, very weak short term divergence. Here it is existing, but it's so weak, it's just not particularly useful as an indicator. It needs to be a bit clearer to indicate a, a larger pullback arriving. And stochastics overbought. That's all for me this week with your oil analysis. I hope all our members are having a fabulous weekend.